Hey guys, I am Pixel Dan coming to you from the Mattel booth at San Diego Comic Con. And once again, I am joined by Scott Toy Guru Nightlick. What is up, Scott? Oh, well, you know, I came in a giant costume. I love your costume. Hey, well done, my oh, friend. Your, your face mask was quite impressive there. Yeah, it's not quite as professionally we done as yours, though. though? Are, we, are we friends are now? Are we friends again? I think we're friends right. again. I think it was all in good fun. I liked the last slide at the, the panel. No. Mosquito standing triumphant over Spectre. That made me, you know, I'd ice, ice it over a little I bit. So. We had to give you one. So. Right. <laughs> also, so what do we got going on? You got a lot of new things to show yeah. us today. Um, I was, I, let's jump into the 30th line here. All right, so let's do it. Let, why don't we, uh, let's see. Well, let's start with Drago Man up here. So what we've got here is, so these are the six 30th figures. Now all six of them are out. Right. Um, you can see the original art for each figure that was drawn, um, like my terrible crayon drawing of Spectre there versus the Horseman's amazing professional rendering <laughs> and Terry's amazing version. And uh, Jeff Johns, that's actually uh, a drawing he made when he was nine that he sent me. Oh, very cool. Like, very cool. So that's is that your actual one when you were a kid? Or no, is I drew that off memory, but it looks like I drew it as a kid. <laughs> But you can see we actually, you know, like the whip never made it, right. the rocket boots never, it was going to have uh, jets that like plugged into the okay. bottoms of his feet that were like rocket boots, but that got cut for cost reasons. And then Drago Man, we finally got to the rest of his accessories that come in the weapons pack, um, which we're thrilled about. And you actually got them even better than you would have gotten in the pack, because by doing it in the pack, we were able to do things like this separates and it uh, in the flame and the whip, cool. so it just clicks right on there. And if that had come with him, it would have never separated because that would have been two totally different tools. And it's got even the flaming off sword because the whole idea is like he's holding the sword and he goes, you know, flame on or something. That's <laughs> is that what he says? I don't think he can say I that. Don't think he's, I don't think the copyrights allow to say that. But so this is like the off version. And I think the idea was he could either project the sword or the whip from the same oh, okay. like base. Cool. Is, I think that's what the horsemen were going for. Right. You'd have to ask them for sure. But that's what's new about Drago. So that's great that we could finally complete him and you could own all the accessories. So thrilled about that. Whoops, let's just put that right there. Uh, all right, and then jo Jeff's character, Sir Laser Lot here. This is pretty close to final. Um, I think you've probably seen, you know, the mace, everything is what it is, and then the, uh, the shield, just. It's like a translucent like, shield. Did we yeah. see that before? I don't remember. Um, I don't, this is final. I think okay. the previous one was hand painted and That's looked kind of weird. Yeah. yeah, so this looks a lot better, I think. Am I showing it enough on camera? We're all getting that? All right. Um, this, it was, the, the plume was supposed to be turnable, but they actually glued it in place. Oh. But you can, if you pull it, the glue will kind of snap. Kind of loosen it. Yeah, it's not okay. that tight. So, because it, okay. it was meant to actually go in any direction, okay. and they accidentally glued it. So it is going to be glued on but the final figure, but you can loosen it I up. I loosened mine after like a minute. Whoops, there goes his head. And there goes his head. There goes his sword. See, look, what are you doing? Stuff already. <laughs> It's not my fault. It's not my fault. There you go. All right. So yeah. So you can you can loosen it yourself with a little pulling or hot water. So that's laser lot. There we go. All right. So now we're getting to the new guys down All here. All right. The new guys. So Look the at first this guy. guy. This is Terry's figure, Psy Chop. Wow. So I guess the Edward Scissorhands of the Motu world. So these things are you know articulated in that sense. They you know open and close, turn around. And they also pop off and it's the same joint as Trapjaw or Harkin Hordak or Roboto. Uh, okay. So you can, he actually looks really cool with Roboto parts snapped on. Um, and then he's got this great belt um, that also is removable and is... Which we were wondering what that was yesterday yep. when we saw it over on Horde, Horde Prime, Prime over there. That was actually, that was just a happy accident. I was at home and I was kind of mixing and matching parts and I took his belt off and I'm like, I wonder if that's the same orange as Horde Prime. And so I just put one together on Spectre's body, put on the Horde Prime head, and it's like, wow, that looks that really looks cool. Really well, yeah. So that There's was just... some kit bashing you can do at home. Yeah, there. that's yeah. all. That's why yeah. we make all the parts swappable. Right. Exactly for that reason. So uh, you'll learn his backstory in his bio, but he's uh, he's related to Trapjaw in a way. They were they were old buddies, shall we say? Oh, okay. We'll find out some more. That's why the belt kind of looks a little Trapjaw. Cool. There's a backstory there and uh, how he wound up in this. Kit bash. So we can see like his insides. Yeah, there. it's the Roboto chest with a different piece inside. So you get the intestines and some some body wow. parts there. So uh, yeah, that was all part That's of the shirt parts. Nice and gruesome. I like and it. And it's got the Beast Man <laughs> legs and body and uh, Roboto chest and a new head. Very cool. So awesome. That is Psy Chop, Terry's character. All He's a character. Horde member, huh? Uh, so his, his packaging's got the Horde sticker on. Yeah, yeah. He's more of he's kind of a uh, freelancer. Okay. But he, at this time, he's working for the Horde. All the, right. So we'll flip the bio around tomorrow. 
All right, Castle so now this, Skull Man. this is our create a character winner, yep. right? So this is Daniel Benedict, was our winner. Congratulations, Congratulations, Daniel. Daniel. I, I haven't talked to you yet, but congratulations. <laughs> he doesn't even, he, he found out he won today. The thing that really blew me away for this to be the winner was the fact that Daniel actually indicated for it to have the swords based on the original flag that was on top of Castle Grayskull. Yes. And I was like, oh, that's so, that is like exactly the kind of thing that should win. And it did. Yeah. Um, he actually wasn't my choice going into the final round. Really? But, yeah, my mine one didn't even make the top five. Oh. So we had eight that went in, and but uh, but he, I did vote. I, he was one of my votes. We all got two votes. The way it worked is we we did it star search style, where there were eight judges, and each judge had their favorite pick that was up on a board next to their name. Right. And if someone came along that they liked better, they would just replace that one. Grayskull Man here was one of the judges' favorites from like day one. He almost, he never found one he liked better. Wow. Me, I found like a new one like every month or so and I'd replace or I'd go back to an older one I liked best, but it kept us only looking at eight at once. And then when we had the final vote off, uh, all the judges went in and you were allowed to vote for two of the eight, but you couldn't vote for yours. Oh, okay. If you will. Right. So that's why my, the one I brought into the final eight actually didn't even make it wow. into the top six. But, um, yeah, but I, th I think he was absolutely deserving. So he's got all this Grayskull deco going on. Like, the face looks like the front of the castle. The shield is from the drawbridge. Yep, yep. The swords are from the flag. So that's, I think that's definitely got a very cool, like, vintage Masters vibe and works great for a creative character winner. That's you know? really what pushed him over the edge. Yeah, yeah. we just looked at him and we're like, that just looks like it should have been in the vintage. Like, Castle Grayskull, man. It just, <laughs> it just worked. So we're really, I, I can't wait to get him. So, uh, oh, and he will have... Whiplash's shoulders that have like the, because those kind of have the the, the rocky. Right. Kind of, okay. So he'll have Whiplash's shoulders, not not the. Uh, and his hair is a little more green here. It'll be more like, white. This it'll be more white. Like okay. This. Yeah. Got it. A little it. bit more like that. That's a little too spicoli there. <laughs> so uh, awesome. we're, we're still we're still adjusting. Okay. Fantastic. So that's the thirtieth line. So now we need to take a walk over to the other side to check out all the new stuff. That let's you go put. check it out. All right. Let's do it. All right. All right, so now we're over at the new stuff. Let's see stuff. what we got here. All right, so let's uh, we'll just go in order. We'll start with Mechanek, even though he's, you've still seen him. But there he is in package. So you can see he's got both neck pieces that just are interchangeable to recreate the vintage fig, uh, feature. There's his bio, which we revealed yesterday, talking about how he got his neck implants. Nanites. Nanites, yeah. It was always nanites. Um, all right, here's Dragon Blaster Skidder. This guy is not final final. The final one will actually have a peg where the dragon attaches to the back. This one is okay. an early sample, that so it doesn't stay on. Right. The final one will, and the final loop will be a little bigger, so this isn't kind of like stuck like that. Okay. But it is a real metal chain. Uh, the head does pop off, and I think they're the same size, so if you wanted to do that. Now I'm curious to put that on Drago Man's body. I want to see what it looks yeah, like. Okay, this one's not <laughs> quite working, but it, oh yeah, it, it, it will kind of sort of be interchangeable. There you go. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so, I mean, it wasn't really, that was sort of a happy accident. It wasn't right. designed that way, but hey, why not? Um, all right, so there, so, and he comes with the power sword in purple. Um, that's pretty much Dragon Blaster Skull. Okay. Fantastic. And he comes with the last mini comic. Which, the last, the third mini comic. Oh my God, it is, the last mini comic, like, you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> Believe me. Like, the first two were all set up. The first one was setting up, like, the world. The second one was just telling a fun story. The third one, the gloves are off. You're gonna see a lot of the events from the bios yeah. in the comic, in this mini comic, like right. things you've been reading about for the past few years. You're gonna see it, and it's gonna be awesome. awesome. I seriously, I just cannot wait for people to open that. All right, so we'll just kind of let him dangle since the dragon doesn't really stay on him right now. Okay. <laughs> Don't knock him down. I know he's like top heavy. Maybe he'll. All right, we'll, we'll fix him. <laughs> there we go. Lay him down. Lay him All down. right. Okay, Frosta. Uh, it's a close to finished Frosta. Um, pretty much no big shocker. I mean, we did the face is definitely a lot closer, still being worked on. This will spin. Um, the shield is, you know, just She-Ra's shield in new colors. No big shocker there. Um, the hair looks a little translucent yeah, now. There, there's definitely some translucency to the hair. So it kind of gets thicker. It's kind of to go for like an ice right. kind of feel there. So now is the is the white is that final on there? Because it is kind of like a grayish white instead of like I a bright I white. I know she's not final final. Okay. Um, none of these are even close to final final. Okay. Um, Spiker's the only one that's final there. So she's still. I know, and even Ruben was fixing up the face too. He wasn't happy, so okay. he wanted to make sure she looked more feminine. So. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Well, there she's looking go. great so far. Yeah. So far, so good. All right. There we go. Awesome. All right, we got 
going to slide the case here. So next is Rattler. He's really cool. All right, so here's Classics Rattler. Um, we did talk a lot about doing the armor. Um, and it wound uh, up being a cost issue. He has so much deco on him. Right. With all, every one of these is a hit. And okay. he is actually one of the most expensive figures in the entire line because of all this deco. Every blue it had to be a hit. Wow. It's not just okay. like one stripe. So it's like you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, it's like hundred hits. Wow. So we couldn't afford to do the 2000X armor, but we were trying to see if maybe that might be for a weapon pack or something. Could we, you know, we sneak these things in with right, other ones. Right. So we're definitely looking at trying to find a way to do that. But He's you'll notice a horde armband. he is. He does have a removable horde armband. So maybe we'll find out more when we show the bio tomorrow why that's there. Mm -hmm. He also has uh, like mech and neck. You just take the neck piece and you put it in there, and so he can have his vintage okay. action feature, and that just clicks on. So fantastic! And he's got a rattle. And he's got head. a rattle. Awesome. So he's got a rattle, and it's just King Hiss's uh, staff in new colors. Very cool. But, but he looks fantastic. New, you know, I mean, he's pretty much, I mean, we did get to cheat by paying for some of him with the Snake Man, right. the, uh, the, uh, the, the army builder. But, I mean, he's 100% tool. Right. This is like, there's no old parts here. So that was, that was basically one of our 100% tool figures for the year. All right. So let's put him All up. Right. Okay. I'm not going to touch these guys because they're a little fragile. But this is Eternos Palace Randor. We've been saying there'd be kind of a filmation. Right, right. I mean, it is so. And I think he got the loudest reaction yeah, at the reveals. He, he really like, did. that was impressive <laughs> to hear the crowd would... react to him. Yeah. It's great because it's, it's going to be so cool to have him and Marlena and Adam and Adora next to each other. It's like a happy family. Originally, that was actually going to be a 2000X Randor. Oh, okay. But when we got filmation rights, we were just like, how can we squeeze filmation into this year? We were looking at the lineup, we're like, oh, I can't kill Rattler, and I don't want to get rid of Frost of. Like, oh, but we got to, why don't we just do instead 2000X Randor, we'll do filmation. filmation. Okay. So for those of you saying, when are we going to get a 2000X variant, you are going to get one, but we switched to filmation. It's like picking children, you know? Is there still a chance of a 2000X one? No, it doesn't mean we won't do it, it just means not yet. Right. It just pushed that one off. Okay. It's like filmation just pushes stuff off, you know? What do you... What are you going to do? Right. But obviously I think people are happy and he's got his little, his little, little drink, goblet. his little goblet that's <laughs> grape <laughs> juice, not wine. Grape juice, okay. Yes, yeah, Mattel. Of course it is. Grape juice, right? Grape juice. Decker. Oh, okay. I love, I'm not going to, he falls over too, but okay. Decker is awesome. So you get two different heads. You get like current retired head. And this was actually one of the rare toys where Mattel actually changed the horseman sculpt. I was very specific with the young head that I wanted him to have Man-at-Arms as mustache very deliberately because I wanted that to be a, a visual link between Man-at-Arms and Decker. Okay. And so you could take the young Man-at-Arms head and the young Decker head and kind of have like a young pair and then take the mustache Man-at-Arms head and the white hair and have like an older pair. When the horseman sculpted it, they actually gave him more of a goatee and Ruben actually digitally took the mustache off the file from Man-at-Arms put it on Decker's head and did a new uh, printout of the wow, head. Okay. So this is one of the very rare figures where we actually overrode the horseman. But I honestly stand by it because I wanted to have that visual connection. Okay. And I think the mustache, it just did it. Right. So we gave him exactly Man-at-Arms mustache. So it is the four horseman sculpt of the mustache, but we removed from, the goatee. Uh, Man-at-Arms, okay. Yeah, they literally it. lifted it off of the figure. It's crazy what you can do these days with computers. So his mace looks different though too. Yeah, it's it, not the same as Man at Arms. It's, it's got more of the techno thing yep, going on. It's, yep, so you could do more, you know, you could. So here's Pair him up with your Snake Man at Arms, get yep. yourself more of a 2000X look going on. We're in, now that we're in the fifth year, I think customers, fans are really going to see that our, what are, you know, our long term goals that we were setting in the beginning are kind of coming to fruition. For, yeah, for, I can't touch yeah, that's, that's the word, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's been a long Comic Con. Doing things like this, you know, the whole th this was all deliberate. This is why the heads were removable and why the armor was always swappable because we knew, like, one of our fan choice slots, the Evil Lynn, the Cloak and Dagger Evil Lynn. Right. The idea is if she wins, she's not like exact, I mean, she's not 100% the original 2000X Evil Lynn, she's the cloaked one, but you could mix and match parts with uh, Battleground Evil Lynn, much like you could mix and match right. parts, hypothetically if she won. So that was always part of the plan, and I'm really excited to see that, you know, starting to really bubble up. All right. So yes, your question was it's a new mace? Yes, it's yes. a new mace. Awesome. Okay. Who's this guy? Oh yeah. He's actually closer to production. You, you want to you hold him? I do. You want to hold him? You want to? Can I touch uh, him? See ya. Okay. Now, he actually does have the wrong feet. 
the feet are actually swapped um, on this. I, yeah, Cornboy pointed that out to me earlier. Yeah, so we're gonna fix. We're gonna fix that. Yeah. There's early. It's still early enough that we can fix that. Um, yeah. <laughs> so these are on full ball joints. There, you know, you can see. So if you don't want to see them, like Webster, you can pack them down, or right. in all sorts of crazy. Are they removable? Are they're they not removable. Out? They're not. Okay. Is, so it, you know, it, it's all. It's, it's all an armor. An armor yeah, piece. it's an armor piece. Okay. So that way we could keep the the joint. Right. We went back and forth on him a lot, probably more than almost any other figure. Do we do liquid? How do we recreate it? Do we do the blood tanks? Do we do the pinchers? And because we went back and forth like four different versions, we kind of ran out of time. And we were sort of burning up a lot of our resources, which is why he only wound up with one accessory. Because we had the tank, then it didn't fit because of these. Right. And then we were going to try to do plates, but those weren't working. So we wound up going with something that kind of looks like veins and like blood is in there. It's actually two pieces. It's clear on white. Okay. And it's actually quite a lot of intricate tooling to pull this off. But um, you know, Ruben and the Horsemen, they really put a lot of care into this one, so you'll be I happy. I can tell yeah. that they put a lot of work into it, and I'm very happy with it. I mean, Liquid Blood would have been awesome, but I'm very, very happy with this. I have to say that. There's I'm only so just much, so excited. Yeah. yeah. So there you go. There's Mosquito. He, I'm sure he'll be like ripping Spectre to pieces. In your That's room. right. Absolutely. Wait till I get that I'm, figure. You have no idea. You're not gonna get one because. Yeah, of no, I'm not gonna get one. I'm not one. gonna send oh, yeah. you Mosquito. Yeah, that's not cool. <laughs> All right, so there's Mosquito with his backwards feet, but they'll be fixed. All right, let's jump back over here. Jump back and down here. Okay, so back down here. Logical order. All right. Um, so we got, well, Procrustus. Procrustus. So he's uh, the last of the oversized figures. So he's the, the giant from one of the early mini-comics, the, the Magic Stealer, I believe. And he guards the center of Eternia, which we also know had the star seed in it. Right. So we were like, well, if you already have a giant in the middle, and we're supposed to have the star seed in the middle, we should sort of combine those stories. That's all what classics is about. Right. Taking the best elements of different canons and finding a way to justify figures. Right. So I think that'll come out. Yeah, there we go. So it's, it's you know, an orb. It's right. a big, it's a cool. big marble. Um, that'll fit right in his hand there. And uh, he, you know, he uses Titus and Megator pieces with some new arms and stuff. If you have Titus and Megator, you kind of know what you're approximately getting. Right. But uh, he kicks ass. He's awesome. Progressive. I love this. Yeah. Very and cool. for you mini comic fans, there you go. All right. So then that brings us to 2013. All right. Next year. Let's All see right. What we got. So Jitsu here. Luckily, these guys are on stand, so I can kind of turn them around. So you can see he's got little things in his back that'll hold the weapons. I think they kind of go in like oh, that. Okay. It doesn't work on the prototype. This is this is the actual horseman resin prototype, and of course his vintage katana. So he's got both of these that'll snap into the back, and uh, there you go. That's pretty I much like very, Jitsu very nice, with the oversized yeah. hand. I loved Jitsu when I was a kid. He was one of my favorites. Natasa. So yeah, we went. Yeah, you know, obviously, you know, back and forth about getting more Princess of Power, but from you know, we're getting there. I mean, the roadmap hasn't changed. She was always going to be the February 13th figure. Um, you know, why Natasa, not Glimmer? You know, we're going to get to Glimmer. She'll be a big name. Right. Um, there's no reason she might not be in 13 or another year, but, you know, the big names are still coming, but Natasa was great to, you know, bring more ethnicity, and she's, she is one of the more fan-demanded ones, because she right. was so... Well, she was hard to get in the original yeah. line. Yeah. So the cape is one of her weapons, so it's removable and it becomes a net. Okay. And then she's got the shield. So that's Natasa. All right, we'll cross over this way again. All right, Fang Man. This was the one we. This was uh, a full-on filmation yeah, character. Filmation Here we go. This point, full speed ahead. That's what we've been waiting for. So, uh, Fang Man definitely made it in because of Eric. Eric really wanted to do Fang Man, right. and since filmation was not part of the original rollout, they that these actually became figures that we could affect what people wanted and what fans were saying um, because it wasn't going to affect them because they were new no matter what. They were never baked in. So he comes with the uh, the time tablet there, and his sword and mace from the episode. His tongue is articulated; it goes back and forth. Oh, very and cool! And his jaw goes up and down; it's articulated. He's got a new new neck piece as well. So he's got a lot of new pieces and some reuse of the boots and the gloves. Excellent. And he's our you know next to Shadow Weaver and Randor there. Right, we're so getting them out. Yeah. yeah. So you will see other filmation characters throughout the year. Um, they'll be sprinkled in just like, we're kind of treating it like a faction, like, you know, okay. do we get the yeah. horde, do we get Princess of Power, okay, let's get some filmation. But sometimes you can cover both, you know, right. like, um, uh, Octavia would cover horde, Princess of Power, and filmation, filmation. you know? Yeah, you're right. So we'll see who else we get to. Ram Man? Ram Man, there oh, he is. All right. So you get, he's like really fragile. 
All right. So you can see how big he is compared to another figure there. Yeah, he's massive. Yeah. So he'll be an oversized figure for thirty dollars. Okay. What you see is, I mean, he's fully articulated. He's got knee joints, you know, that are really innovative. I mean, you can see his hand is as big as you know anyone's head. <laughs> he's got an interchangeable head, so he's got. Let's see if I can pull that off without. Oh, look at all that goo there. So there you go. There's Ram Man's maskless head. Oh, look at that. Yeah, he's really fragile. I'm going to kind of hold him. And, you know, I mean, they've literally just translated directly from the, uh, the cross cell. Okay. You know, a lot of, I saw a lot of artwork and some renderings of what Ram Man might look like in classics. When, I, when the horseman sent this over, I was just like, wow, you just took the cross cell and turned it into a toy. Which right. I know is what they love. He did the same with Merman. Like, that's Eric's thing. Right. So, didn't, like, ask for that. That's just what they gave that's us. What they gave. Like, well, they did a fantastic yeah. job. And so. the fans are going to be very happy, obviously, because he's been one of the most fan-requested figures for yeah. so long now. And, he, you know, he's a 100% tool. He's using up a lot of our tooling budget right. for the whole year. But uh, he's worth it, you know. That's why we had to wait till this year. Absolutely worth it. All right, now we get into our so King He Man. Oh, King He Man. I this is this is my favorite figure. Ruben, really, this is your favorite. Ruben can't stand this one. He thinks this is like looks like it got vomited out of the '80s. Oh. But I love King He Man. I mean, definitely because I, I mean, I, this was definitely a character I was pushing for mm -hmm. because it helps bring the brand forward. You know, I, we didn't make up King He Man. He's been around. He was mentioned in the the whole Dare Son of He Man you know, Filmation sequel that, was, that, right. that didn't really happen. But we snuck him purposely into the second mini comic because we knew we wanted to get to the figure okay. and yep. because we needed a visual. So Wellington actually created the look and we, we needed to make sure it was clear that that was He-Man and not King Randor that Spectre was talking to in the mini comic. So that's why Wellington, we had him put the, the, the He-Man cross and we gave him like the Leonidas Anakin scar. Yes, <laughs> I know that's very stereotypical, but it's done as a visual way of reminding you that, oh, you know, this is He-Man, but it's time has passed. Things right. have happened, and you could really tell that from the Sword of Power, or the electronic version. Yeah, so why is he using the electronic version? Well, What's so up with that? So, uh, you know, obviously, you know, someone else has the sword at this point. Right. And so, but he still has one last battle to fight, so what's he going to do? He's going to pull his electronic sword out of retirement, because he's already, you know, someone else is using the power sword at this point. Maybe it's his son. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he he's, looks like he's kind of taped a new handle to it. I mean, it's just scuffed up all the way to hell. I mean, there's a lot of detail on this thing. So, this was an accessory like Panthor's hat that I, I feel really good because, like, I actually asked for this. So, it's sort of like a little... I, anytime I can have a little touch, I'm like, yeah, that's cool. So, I was he's, really happy. He's got that. a lot of hero elements, too, I've noticed. Yep, like, that's kind of cool, working that into his armor there. Yeah, it's, you know, it's showing the progression, you know. It's, it's linking hero to the new hero, in a way, right. you know. So, naming him, you know, naming his son after the old, uh, the Preternia hero. And he will come with the only mini-comic we're doing next year, because they're damn expensive, and we, we basically didn't have money to do them. It was a gift. We got a, a basically a donation for management for the 30th to do the three, we basically spent all of our non-media for 13 to do one, but it's going to be 12 issues, 12 pages, not eight, and it's going to tell the origin of Skeldor. Like, Very cool. and you're going to see a lot of, uh, again, a lot of things that you've read in the bios actually come to life, and you're going to fill in a lot of gaps. There's a lot of information in this one. Excellent, excellent. So it's excellent. already been drawn. It's uh, being colored right now. It's by Wellington as well, so... Uh, we wanted to keep continuity, even though we switched to DC. It's still the same artist. Okay. So. Yeah. Very cool. All right, we'll move that over here. So that, that brings us to our uh, to Strobo. Another mini comic. Another, uh, yeah, not mini comic, but uh, it, it was the not the UK comic. Was it the UK comic? It was just the uh, it was the comic comics, not the mini comics. The comic comics. The comic comics. Ah. The so since Strobo is so much reused parts, we didn't really feel comfortable making him a, a monthly. Right. But he was a perfect candidate for that for a, a convention figure. So he's going to be our traveling convention figure. We don't know which conventions we'll be at in 13. PowerCon, New York, maybe Wizard World, that kind of, or uh, WonderCon. We're still figuring that out. But once we know, he'll be at those shows. He'll come with uh, his orb holder and his meteorite, which, okay, this is stuck on, but it will come off. Oh, okay. I'm not going to pull it now, because it's, but it will come off. I think it will. And this was also when I was begging to get in there, the Zodak head. Unmasked Zelman. Something Zodak I would have loved cool. to have with Zodak, but back early in the line, we just didn't have the tooling. Right. So I've waited years. I even bought one off someone at PowerCon that was making bootleg Zodak maskless heads. I, uh, 
but even though I knew this was coming out. So I'm really excited to finally get this on Zodak. Excellent. Yeah, it's much needed for yeah. that character for sure. So, you know, much sort of like with uh, Demo Man, we had that Skeletor head. We're going right. to do a lot of that. Right. A lot of stuff that rewards fans who have bought previous figures, then now you're going to get a new way to display them. That's all part of the long-term plan. It always was. Excellent. All right. Finally, our last sneak peek. Actually, we should do Granamir too there. We will do Granamir after this, but so we got to see what these guys are. Fighting Foemen. Fighting Foemen. So this was one that very early in Classics, when we first revealed it, one of the figures fans were asking for was the model kit drivers, and honestly, we didn't have them skewed in. But when we added Beasts and Oversize, which were not part of the original rollout, the original rollout was just basic figures, we're like, well, okay, now that we can start, let's, what creative avenues can we take? And the horsemen really, really wanted to do the model kit drivers. So they came up with this great idea of ha giving them weapons that were an allusion to the vehicle they were driving. And you'll find out in their bio why all of their chest symbols, they can swap and they can become horde members. So they can either be the fighting foemen or eventually they get recruited by the horde. You'll find out details and these things, I'm not going to pull it out because it's really fragile, but these just snap in so you could pull that off and then snap that right on. Okay, very and they, cool. And change their alliance. So like, the, yeah, the weapons, like you mentioned, they're all homages to the vehicles from the yeah, model kits the that they were featured on. The attack track, the talent, talent fighter, fighter. Yeah. very cool. So, and they're all, and they're named, the horsemen uh, named them after their, uh, the people in their studio, like Sherry and, and Owen right. and stuff, so. Oh, dog. Yeah, that was really cool. Awesome. So we, we let them name them. So, the, I mean, they just look very masters and just very cool. Right, and people have actually asked for the pilots for a long time. Yeah. So this is kind of a cool way to get those into the line, you know. And you finally find out who the fighting foe men are. There we go. So, Excellent. Yeah, so lots more to come on them. All right, so do we want to move down to the big guy let's, down let's, here? Let's, let's All right, here. let's do All it. Right. We'll just believe this unlocked for a moment. Don't steal Mosquito. I will do my best not to steal Mosquito. I'm going to steal Mosquito. Do it right now. <laughs> All right. All right, here he is. So we actually got a couple. Let's, we had a couple. These are the Icon uh, letter opener. Yep. So this is a licensed product, but we're uh, got some weight to it. It does have some there. weight to it. I actually picked one of these up. Yeah. I really like it. Yeah. And it goes in the business card holder. You can put it in the business yes. card holder. Yes, very yeah. cool. So that's on sale here at Comic-Con. I can't wait to get mine. Uh, all right, Granamir. He's really fragile, so I'm going to be careful. And he's the size of a small child. He is huge. Look at this guy. So here's Granamir. So he's eighty dollars. Now I know people were, you know, saying December doesn't work for high-priced items. He was originally supposed to ship in September, but honestly, he's huge. He just took so long to develop. He just kept getting pushed out and pushed out, and we didn't want him to go into thirteen. Right. So he just wound up being. So, you know, you're told now he's in December. Start saving your uh, attorney in rubies, and uh, he'll be worth it. Uh, he is fully articulated. This early sample is a little fragile, so I'm not going to totally move him. Right, but like that's why the, there's some of the paint scuffs yeah, and the joints oh, yeah. and everything, but that's not the Ruben, final look yeah, at all. Yeah, Ruben Hand painted this like two days ago. Okay. In fact, the arm's already like coming out there. But to show you, his leg does go down. It's still Fantastic. very fragile, but there you can see like the height. I mean, he's getting big. The tail is articulated in two places. It doesn't work here, but it's articulated here and here. The wings will be fully articulated. Uh, the helmet does not come off, people are asking. It's, it's permanently attached. Um, doesn't have accessories. He basically is his own accessory. But, like, one of the other things I had talked to you about yesterday, he's not a rotocast, is he? No, he's not. He's like a full figure. So he's solid and heavy. You, you want to kind of... Yeah, so yeah, he's, he's not he's... like as light as like the Megator and the exactly. Titus. He's actually got some weight to him. He, I mean, he'll have a hollow belly, but yeah, he's, right. he's a solid toy. Very all right, cool. so let's put him back here. Is there so, a price point for him? $80. Yeah. $80, okay. $80, yep. So you can see him. You know, I, uh, we had Titus in here yesterday. I don't know what happened to him. Well, Procrustus there is a good yeah. example. Yeah, so you could, yeah, absolutely. So you can see he's definitely bigger than a basic figure or Procrustus. Right. Fantastic. Okay. And, uh, Did that pretty much cover it? Yeah, and, then, and don't forget, if you're here at Comic-Con, we have the uh, gift with purchase. This is the Jeff Johns 10-page Sir Lazerlot story. That's also, also bound with uh, James' first issue. Oh, okay. So it's the first issue and the first digital comic. The only way the digital comic has been shown in print so far. And those are here at the convention? It's a free gift with purchase with Vicron. 
Oh, okay. Like Fantastic. Like the the pre-orders, get and those the too? And pre-orders. And okay. the yep. Excellent. Fantastic. Yep. 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 Exactly. And Jeff will be here tomorrow signing at 1230. Okay. So he'll sign those. Awesome. Well, Scott, we have a lot of great things, obviously, going on here for the 30th anniversary of He-Man and Masters of the Universe. So thank you very much for once again taking the time to walk us through all of it. A lot of exciting things are happening, obviously. Absolutely. Guys, you know, buy your 2013 subscription. I don't just say that because I'm the marketing manager, but... Really, we're going to base 14 off of how 13 sells. Okay. So your purchase of a subscription is a vote, honestly, for support for the brand. want to see these figures keep coming, yeah. guys. You gotta I mean it. Like, honestly, buy your subscription, not because like, I'm begging you as a brand manager, but as a fan, I want more toys. Right. And the best way to get more toys is to buy subscriptions. Okay. Excellent. Fantastic. Well, Scott, thank you very much. Anytime. Once again, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. From San Diego Comic-Con, this is Pixel Dan reporting.